everyone, my name is Lauren Holt and this is Frost from Tailings. In the mining industry, mining companies use several methods to dispose of their waste, including tailing dams and tailing ponds. In this project, we look at those tailing wastes and we look at ways that we can turn um, these waste products into viable byproducts, including glass and other fibers that can be used for a multitude of purposes. Um, our main focus on this project in this phase was to look at the mineralogy of the sample. We started off by prepping the samples um, in the mining laboratories using a cone and quarter method to remove any bias in our sample. From there, we took our samples over to the MCC facility and we looked at the automated mineralogy using TIMA software. Um, we were able to look at uh, the XRF data as well um, using pressed powders that was used from the excess of the sample. Our automated mineralogy revealed that most of the minerals found were silica um, and other uh, various minerals, including feldspar, muscovite, and pyrite, that are pretty common within mine tailings and also some of the most common minerals in the world. Um, we also have the general mineral list to look at what other minor minerals are included in our tailing waste. Um, we also have a general in figure seven, a general false colored image of the um, grain mounts that we analyzed. We analyzed grain mounts from size fractions ranging from plus four to minus 400 on the Tyler screen size range. Um, we did notice in some of the size ranges like the plus four, there were some discrepancies due to nuggeting when we had to hand crush samples um, to get those powders for the grain mounts. Um, another error that we saw was in the difference between the uh, plus 400 and minus 400 size fraction, it appeared that some of the uh, sediments kind of clumped together and from there it revealed um, they weren't isolated and so it could alter the way that the amount of silica present could be decreased because they were grouped together instead of being individual grains, um, which is shown in figure eight and nine. Moving forward on this project, we are going to take our results from the XRF, XRD, and automated mineralogy and take these results to the Metallurgical and Materials Engineering Department at Colorado School of Mines and look at what materials are in there that are viable for glass, but also what minerals might not be viable for glass, which would be minerals including zircon and others. And from there, we will look at how we can melt and produce glass from these results.